In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert your swing axle Baja bug to IRS rear suspension. As you can see from these clips, they're just some old race clips. Uh, the rear suspension really didn't have much travel and it was uh, really limited in what we could do with it. And that's just because of the nature of um, swing axle rear suspension. So today I'm going to show you how to convert that transmission, arms, and everything to IRS. So the first step is going to be to obviously remove the old transaxle. And this transaxle was on its way out anyways. We had used it for two races and it was already 60 years old. Didn't know any history about it. So it was time to let it go. It was starting to slip out of gears and it was impossible to downshift because the synchros were all worn out. So here it is, transmissionless. Next I got to work removing the torsion system. Now, if you're going to convert to IRS, you do have to get different torsion bars. However, you won't see me replace the torsion bars because I actually went with a coilover setup, which you'll see later in the video. Now, because of all the fabrication I'm going to need to do later in the video, um, I actually decided that the entire rear firewall needed to go. And uh, as you can see, it's also just really rusty. It was really serving zero purpose, especially with it being under the gas tank. Now I would end up relocating the gas tank, but as you'll see in the next clips, I actually just decided to go ahead and cut the rear fender wells and rear firewall out. And it made it so much easier to access where the arms mount and do all the fabrication needed for those areas. Now, if you're doing this kind of transmission and suspension swap on a bug that's gonna be a race car, I would honestly recommend just cutting all this material out because it really did make a world of difference in how easy it was to fabricate everything. And uh, you're just gonna get better welds and better everything because you can reach in the areas that are gonna be really difficult to reach with that sheet middle still in. And then I decided to just go ahead and clean up the edge of where I cut. Uh, I would heat the uh, material up and then pound it so it's a nice smooth surface instead of a sharp cut line. And um, I just decided to do that because I hate when I, you know, go up to people's cars and I kind of taking a look around, bonk my head on some sharp piece of metal and now I'm bleeding. You know, it's just the worst thing ever. Um, and I wanted the edges to just look nice and clean. Um, so it did take another extra four or five hours to do, but it was definitely worth it because the the finish turned out really nice and uh, obviously it's not sharp. So this is an inner arm mount and uh, it welds right where the torsion housing meets the frame horns. And uh, as you'll see, it insets into the frame horn by about an inch or so. I don't remember the exact measurement. So it took quite a bit of just cutting and measuring and just a ton of work to just get the right shape cut out of the frame horn. Uh, but if you do it right and you get a nice weld all around it, it looks really clean, really nice.
Now, as you can see, the arm mount just kind of slips into that pocket that we cut out of the frame horn and uh, fits pretty nice. And then I should also mention the way that you get a nice fit on these and find exactly where they need to go is uh, you should buy a jig and they'll sell a uh, jig on JBugs or California Pacific uh, specifically for an IRS swap. And here's the arms we're going to be using. So these are six by six rear arms. They were made by a mentor of mine. Scott, if you're watching, thank you so much. Absolutely awesome that we were able to get these from you. Next, it was time to mount up the coilovers. These coilovers are actually uh, front Fox coilovers off of a 2013 uh, Wildcat UTV, and they're a perfect size for what we're doing with them. So the first step was obviously to get them mocked up where they're gonna be. Obviously, they're not gonna mount perpendicular like this. That would be ridiculous. Um, but we got them mocked up on this bar, and um, so we're gonna run a couple more supports down to triangulate this bar into place, as you'll see next. Now, as you can see, this uh, last notch on this tube was quite complicated because it's the intersection of three pieces of tubing. And uh, that could have obviously been avoided by landing the tubes in multiple different locations, but I didn't want to do that because then uh, the load would be shared over a couple spots and could potentially bend the tubing. So I'm actually pretty proud of how it turned out. The gaps were actually pretty, pretty small and the welds actually turned out really nice. 
Next we'll make shock tabs, and they'll weld perpendicular to the main support bar there. And uh, that way you could just slide a through bolt all the way through the shock and have a nice spot to mount it. Next, it was time to mount up our bus transaxle. This is a three rib bus transmission. I bought this adapter kit from JBugs and it's just a solid mount kit with the front and rear mounts and it actually ended up working really well. It's really solid and I would highly recommend it. I also bought this shift linkage adapter, uh, which theoretically should make the stock shift linkage from a bug work with the bus transmission, but it didn't end up working and you'll see why later in the video. So this is the shift linkage adapter I was talking about earlier. And uh, when I first installed it, it actually worked pretty well. Went into all the gears and it seemed like it was gonna work just fine. Uh, but then I was testing it and uh, the old shift bushing inside the tunnel broke and I decided it wasn't worth it to try and fix. So I just went with an upright uh, over the tunnel style shifter, which mounts on top of the tunnel and runs shift linkage straight back uh, to the nose cone of the transmission. I was able to salvage the old shift rod. It took a lot of work to get it out of the tunnel, but once I got it, I was able to reuse it to make some new shift linkage. Now the next thing we did was actually custom make axles for the bug. We started with these stock bug axles and then uh, literally just cut them in half as you can see here. And then we actually sleeved the axle with some one inch inner diameter, um, just mild steel tubing. I then ground down the welds on the outsides of the sleeve section of the axle because I wanted to slide another sleeve over the top of this and then lay down just a really nice weld over the top of all of it. And the reason for this is because I was afraid that the axle wouldn't be strong enough as it was uh, because the uh, inch in inner diameter tubing uh, wasn't necessarily thin, it was 120 wall, but uh, I don't think it's thick enough to really handle that much stress. So we decided to double sleeve it. So we had a little bit of uh, leftover roll cage tubing, which is, I believe, inch and a half outer diameter 
um, just mild steel. And then um, it actually fit really perfectly over the existing sleeve. As you can see in this um, clip, I didn't really have to pound it that much. It pretty much just slid over it. And then I kind of had to tap it into place. And then after that, it was just uh, time to throw a massive weld over all of it. And after that, we put the axles on. Yeah, I know we don't have CV boots on there yet, but uh, just for you know testing purposes, or maybe because we're lazy, either way, I finally got to drive my bug for the first time. <laughs> 